Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge, and welcome to Stranded Alien Dawn, which is a futuristic settlement survival game, and I am always a little bit hesitant to make direct comparisons between games, but I think it's quite safe to say that Stranded Alien Dawn can be very well described as RimWorld, but with fancy 3D graphics, which is all very exciting indeed. And look at it on the screen there, on the menu screen, it's very pretty, look at that, whole new world to explore, lots of new environments and biomes, many new kind of plants and things to encounter, and of course a whole host of new beasties that would probably like to go and eat us. So it does look wonderful, it looks absolutely amazing, but at its core it is very rimworldy. We have a group of survivors, we build a base, we craft items, we make weapons, we struggle to get enough food together because, you know, it's a settlement survivor game and that's what happens. We fight off the local troublesome wildlife, we build lots of defences, it's all very rimworldy and I'm okay with that. I'm absolutely 100% fine with that because we had a splendid time with rimworld on the channel all those years ago so hopefully we can have fun with this game too. Now before we dive in and get playing we all have to say a great big thanks to Dave over at We Hours Games because a while back he very kindly gifted me this game and it was a while back now it was many many months ago but it was very kind of him so a huge big thanks to Dave thank you Dave and if you haven't already then you should go and check Dave's channel out because it is all quite brilliant indeed there'll be a card thingy on the screen somewhere to transport you via internet magic to his channel so you can go and take a little look. But anyway, I think it's about time for us to get on with it, isn't it? Let's jump right in and play some Stranded Alien Dawn. Okay, so in terms of game settings, I'm not really going to fiddle about with these too much because I've not really played the game properly. I've done the tutorials and that's kind of it. I've not played the game properly itself. So we're not going to fiddle about too much in case we make our life a bit difficult. So in terms of our scenario, we're going to stick with the crash landing one. While en route to the outer worlds, the passenger ship Alien Dawn. Oh, that's where the name comes from. The passenger ship Alien Dawn suffers a catastrophic hyperdrive malfunction and starts breaking apart in orbit of an unknown planet. Up to four passengers reach one of the emergency landing pods. This is the story of their survival. Okay, right, so now we know the context of what's going on. We know why we're on this kind of planet and their mission is to find a way back to civilization. Okay, right, I like the sound of that, so we'll stick with that. Then we have the region. Okay, so we have the region down here of Sobrius, temperate mountain area with large meadows. Okay, that sounds quite nice. Then there's a deserty one. I think that's going to be quite difficult to grow any kind of food on, so maybe we don't do that for our first run. However, I do quite like the sound of that. Sol 2, tropical region covered with dense jungles, swamps, rivers, and hot beaches. That could make things a bit different, couldn't it? It might be a little bit more challenging, but it might sort of you know, mix things up a little bit. And I mean, it says they're hot beaches. I mean, our people need to relax. They could craft a couple of deck chairs, put them out on the beach, get some sort of parasol type things. And they could sit on the beach in their deck chairs, having some pina coladas or whatever the futuristic equivalent of that would be. I quite like the sound of that. So either we go for lovely, comfortable, temperate areas or... Do we go for a tropical region? Just to maybe make things a bit different. And it is new as well. Do you know what? Let's maybe just mix things up a bit. We'll go to a slightly different area. Then we have the moon. Okay, what does the moon do? Why does the moon have any bearing on anything? Concordia is a goddess of balance. Okay. Uh, Jason. The moon of Jason sends tough challenges, but provides time to prepare for them. Ah, right, okay. Okay, so this does have a bearing on the game, so that's nice and balanced. Jason is tough challenges but gives time to prepare. Nyx is the goddess of night. Okay, so maybe it's always night time. And yeah, the moon of chaos is going to make things all a bit sort of uh, all a bit all over the place and bonkaloids. Okay, maybe for a first run through, we'll just pick Concordia, thank you. Game difficulty medium. We're not going to change the rules. Here we go, seed. Can we change this around? So currently grab fail. Can we put anything in there we like? Can we type anything? Yes, we can. Okay. How about then, cup of tea? Can we go to the World Cup of Tea and see how we get on? Is it going to let us? Yes, it is. Okay, that's very exciting. So I think we're ready to go. I think we can go and see how well we do in the sort of slightly swampy, more temperate region with the Moon Concordia on a planet generated from the seed cup of tea. I like the sound of that. So here we go. Let's dive in and see what happens. Oh, now we get to pick our survivors. Oh, okay, right. I thought we'd just be given them randomly because, of course, they're surviving a kind of spaceship crash. I thought we'd get whoever the game gives us. 
I didn't think we could choose. Ah, right, okay, this kind of changes things around a little bit. So, okay, let's have a look at the different kind of stats we've got going on. So, combat, construction, cooking, crafting, farming, healing, intellect, and physical. Okay, so everyone's got these, and also people have their own traits as well. So, for example, Annette Falkov here is calming, compassionate, but also a little bit slow. Okay, but you are quite good at cooking and you're quite good at crafting. Don't want to do building or fighting or anything, but we have got four people. So maybe actually you would not be such a bad thing. Your movement speed is decreased by 25%, but that's okay. I think we can cope with that. You make others happy by cheering them up. That's very good. Keep morale nice and high. And also you try to calm down others regardless of your own opinion of them. That's quite good as well. You do seem quite good, Annette. Um, okay. And yeah, you're pretty good at farming, crafting, cooking, and also healing. That's quite key as well. Okay, how do we pick you then? So how do we kind of swap these around? Um, okay, hang on. Clear it out. Clear everybody out. So clear you. How do we kind of remove you? Ah, right, like that, look. Okay, so at the moment, I think Annette comes in. And let's look through everybody else. I mean, there's quite a few people. There are quite a few people to choose from. But okay, Annette does seem like quite a good candidate to start with. You know, good at cooking, good at crafting, good at farming. So they can look after the kind of the food side of things, which is always important in these types of games. That's often very early on the most difficult thing. Getting food sorted early on in these games is always quite tricky. So I think she could be quite good at that. Um, right, I could be here all day if we went to look through each person individually. So let me just go and have a look, see who's going to be quite good at the other things that Annette can't do, particularly combat. I think we need a couple of combat people and also maybe a proper doctor as well. So somebody who is quite good at healing. So, okay, let me go look through and see who's going to be good to join Annette the survivor. Okay, there we go. I'm quite happy with that little group of people there. So Annette, Ember, Nova and Vanessa. I think they will work together quite well as a group of four survivors. They've got a good range of traits and skills that kind of complement each other. So we have Annette, of course. So Annette, I think, is going to be really more about the cooking and farming. So food provision from Annette there because yeah cooking pretty good crafting not so bad farming pretty good little bit of healing little bit of intellect not so bothered about combat construction or physical but the other people can pick that up and as well Annette is going to be our kind of camp morale officer if you like because they can try to calm people down and they can make people happy so that's kind of Annette's role I sort of see you as doing food stuff and also trying to keep morale up and make people just a little bit happier and a little bit more calm next up we have Ember and Ember is a was a spec ops commander and as you might imagine from somebody who is or was a spec ops commander they're quite fighty they're very good at doing the fighting combat of six that's very good construction of three they can do some building work cooking crafting and farming at zero but that's okay because of course annette can do that so that's quite good and then a little bit of healing bit of intellect and a bit of physical so they're quite good overall and their traits are also quite fighty so they've got tactical commander increases the hit chance and critical hit chance of everyone in 50 meters range by 10 percent so people nearby to her in a fight might be a little bit better at doing the fighting and they're also a combat instructor so they can occasionally improve the combat skill of others again that's never a bad thing so you're on board because yeah fighting is going to happen we're going to have to deal with all sorts of weird kind of beasties that want to come and eat us so we do need some fighty people so ember is our first fighty person and our second fighty person is going to be nova here sergeant major nova Sones, combat of six that's very good indeed that's equal to ember construction of zero so not so good at building things cooking of one crafting of two farming of zero healing of five that's quite important. So Vanessa, who we haven't got round to yet, they're going to be the main doctor. But if Vanessa is unavailable for whatever reason, Nova can also do some good healing work there. You're good at doing the sort of medical stuff. This is quite intriguing. They are incapable of intellect. I don't know how you go about your daily life without using any form of intellect whatsoever. But OK, you can't do that. And you have a physical of four, which is pretty good. And your traits are also quite interesting. You're an interesting character, Nova Sones. You're liberated, so you can't experience meltdowns, but also you can't experience euphoria. So you can't get really sad, but you also can't get really happy. 
you're just quite content with things, which I suppose is okay. You can't have meltdowns, I guess, which is quite good. And you're obtuse. You can't do research or observation tasks. I imagine that's linked to that there, your refusal to do anything kind of intellectual. But okay, that's fine. So there is our second fighty person, Sergeant Major Nova. And last but not least, we have Vanessa Volk. And Vanessa does have a very important role in the camp because she is going to be the chief doctor. She is going to be the medic. And it's your job, Vanessa, to make sure that people don't die. You need to keep people alive, whether they've been wounded or poisoned or infected or whatever. You need to make sure that people don't die. So no pressure, Vanessa. I'm sure you'll be fine. So over here, Vanessa stats look sort of okay. I mean, combat zero, that's okay. Those two can deal with that. Construction zero. Cooking one. Crafting one. Farming zero. Healing five. Very important for a doctory person. Intellect two physical one so they're okay stats they're not the best but it's that trait there that we've picked Vanessa for impeccable healer can't fail a medical treatment so when they do a medical treatment it's going to work we know 100% that's a guaranteed success that's really important that's why we have you Vanessa also Vanessa is a musical prodigy makes others happy when playing music so I don't quite know how we do it, but we might need to try to get some sort of musical instrument for Vanessa to play on to make people cheerful. But Vanessa is a bit sickly. A little bit of an irony thing there. So you're very good at doing doctory stuff, but you recover health twice as slow. We'll have to make sure you don't get injured and lose health. But there we go. I think that's what we go for. Annette, Ember, Nova and Vanessa. Annette the cook and morale officer, Ember and Nova the two fighty people, and Vanessa the super doctor. I think that's it. I think we have our four survivors. Let's jump in, shall we, and go and see how we get on. Okay, right, here we go. Are we supposed to kind of direct this? Are we flying this? Or is that just crashing and we're sort of watching behind? I think maybe we're not in control of this. Okay, there's our little kind of escape pod thing. It's about to crash. I suspect now it has crashed. And there we go. Okay, right, so that's the crash ship. Our people have kind of clambered out a little bit. Oh, okay, hang on a minute. More bits of ship are over there kind of exploding. Okay, right, so now the game has properly begun. However, first things first, let's ask the all-important question. Is Spacebar pause? And yes, I can happily confirm that Spacebar is pause. Well done, game. Good job. Right, I think we take a moment to just look around and see exactly what's going on. So what have we got going on down here? Is everyone okay? Are you all okay? Ember is crying. Okay, understandable. You've just been involved in quite a horrific looking little sort of spaceship crash. That can't be a nice thing. So Ember is having a little bit of a teary moment. I'm completely on board. I would be also a little bit kind of uh, a little bit upset with that. Vanessa kind of just, you know, standing idly by, not knowing what to do. And Nova and Annette trying to calm Ember down. Oh, well done. Already, look, they're trying to work together as a team to make sure everyone's okay. Right, so our people, apart from being a bit upset, seem to be all right. So what else do we have going on? So we do seem to have a few resources. We've got some scrap metal. We, of course, have a little supply of cooked meals. They're kind of emergency ration type things. We've got some first aid kits. We've got no clothing whatsoever, apart from the ones we're wearing now. We have one weapon and we have no other items. Okay. Slim pickings around here, okie doke. And now let's take a look at the world around us because it's really pretty. It's so lovely to look at. Okay, there's already a thing over there. Are you hostile? Do you want to eat us? That's a big question. Flathead animal. Okay. Oh, right. We don't know what it is. We've not kind of examined it yet. Oh, that's why we're calling it a flathead animal because we actually don't know what it is. We've not given it a proper name. Um, okay, I mean, yeah, it does kind of, it does befit that title. It is an animal with a flat head, but okay. Uh, relatively peaceful. Right, that's quite good news. So that isn't going to want to come as and come at us and, you know, turn us into, you know, lunch or whatever. That's quite good. There is the ship over here. What's all that over there? Okay, so a bit like we didn't know what that animal was and we just called it a flat head animal. We don't know what that plant is either. Right now, it's just a twisted plant to us. We have no idea what that is or what it's about or what its properties are or anything like that. And what you have to do in this game, you send somebody over to observe things. So somebody eventually, over time, when we're more settled, will come over here and they'll just look at the plant. They'll look at that thing and, you know, sort of stare at it and observe it and poke it and prod it and see what it's all about. And then eventually we'll have a little bit more information about what that plant can do for us. Can we eat it? Do we chop it and use it for building supplies or whatever? So we need to do that at some point but okay we can't do it right now then over here 
We have, is that just a good old classic rock? Yep, good, get stone out of that, that's useful. Got little kind of tube plant things. Is that an alive thing? It's a bloated insect. Okay, so a little kind of insecty thing over there. There's some very exciting flowers. Pointy red plants. Can we please, when we've observed these, keep calling them pointy red plants? Because that's a perfect description. That's that's amazing. Okay, right, so pointy red plants over there. There's a great big thing here. What's all that about? Is that good or bad? Do we want to go in here? It could possibly be a bit dangerous, but okay, right, so big kind of weird cave thing over there. Plenty of trees over there to get wood. And then over here, more of those kind of weird twisted plant things. And then more, yay, more pointy red plants over there. Okay, oh, hang on, hang on. Is that a new thing as well? Uh, ah, okay, bulky animal, relatively peaceful. Oh, they're adorable. Hello, you. Okay, they look nice, they're nice. They come accompanied with like a load of little flies. That's quite fun. Um, okay, right, so nothing in the local area that immediately wants to come and kill us, which is very encouraging. There's quite, oh, hang on, hang on. Over here in the next sort of little valley type thing, there's a whole load of broken bits and bobs. Spaceship debris. Oh, okay. So yeah, we can go and scavenge this. We can get a lot of good things from these kind of spaceship bits, although they are quite far away. Oh, there's loads. There's what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bits, eight bits. Wow, there's quite a lot of broken spaceship bits. Okay, any more over here? Anything over here? Oh yeah, another bit in there. Right, okay, so there is plenty to scavenge. However, they, oh, what's that? A nest. Okay, are they friendly? Is it friendly over here? Oh, hang on, what's that? That might not be friendly. Uh, oh, okay, right. Giant mantis ant things. Okay, they seem aggressive. Yeah, they, they don't look, they don't look overly nice, do they? They don't look as friendly as the other ones. Okay, right, so stay away from there because they do want to eat us for breakfast. Okie dokie, right. Where are we? Um... Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Where are we? Ah, right, we're over here. There we go. <laughs> that would have been a short series, wouldn't it? I don't know where we are. We've all died. Oh, okay. Okay, let's get... Oh, hang on. What's that? What are they? They're useful. A glowing tree. Okay, we get wood when we cut down the glowing trees, but there's also regular trees over there. Right, so I think, first things first, we haven't really got very much going on. So possibly we should lay out a little kind of stockpile area and just pile all our stuff up into one place. That's going to be quite helpful. So if we, where are we going to set up? Where are we going to build our little base? I mean, here seems quite good. Nice big kind of open space. It looks, you know, sort of, it's covered on that side by a big mountain. So we can't get attacked on all sides unless things can tunnel under things or pop off of mountains. But I mean, yeah, we're okay here, I think. I think we're okay. The only thing is there isn't much in the way of stone nearby. The stone's all kind of over here. There's a bit there and a few little bits over there, but... Yeah, the stone seems to be kind of over in that direction. Oh, there's a bit over here, actually. Hang on. There's a little bit there. So 40 stone, 40... Okay, no, we might be okay. We might be okay. We might have to possibly go a little bit further afield to get some stone. But I think, do we build here or do we build kind of over here? I imagine we can clear that out eventually. We'll chop those trees down and that'll go. We'll dismantle that ship in its entirety, I imagine, to get all the good bits out of it. So do we sort of build here with an item moving down in that direction or do we just build here in the logical big empty place or here uh do you know what actually let's go here let's build right here that's quite nice it's near to some of the spaceship bits nearer to the rock nearer to these things let's build over here so okay so storage stockpile let's put that down uh falling object incoming hang on a second hang on has the spaceship not fully crashed yet um, I suspect possibly more bits of spaceship might be about to fall on us. Hopefully not literally on us. Okay, move time on. Uh, oh, okay. Right. They're running away because a big bit of spaceship just fell over there. I was going to build there. <laughs> Game. I was going to build right there. I was going to put a stockpile there. But no, you had to throw a great big bit of spaceship at us. Okay. Okay. Right. Bit mean, but okie doke. Um, I think then. I think. Oh, that was a perfect place to build. It was right in the middle of many lovely things. Okay, never mind. Maybe we'll set up here. 
I mean, eventually, yeah, I think we'll kind of be able to build over that. We'll chop those trees down. They can go first, I think, and then clear that out. And we'll kind of build over here. That's where our base can go. Right, is everyone okay? Apart from Ember, who is still crying. Um, there's Annette still trying to calm her down. Look, that's wonderful. Right, now can we get a storage in? We're not going to get, you know, killed to death by falling bits of ship again, are we? No. Okay, good. That's quite encouraging. So if we go... Okay, so five tiles of... St oh, hang on, if I've done that wrong. Stockpile. Uh, hang on a minute. So if I go like that, so four tiles, it's... Oh, it's just four tiles long. Okay, right. That's probably okay for now. However, possibly we should have put that under a shelter because that stockpile's not going to be covered. Hang on a minute, hang on, hang on. Um, I, yeah, I did do the tutorial, so I do have a vague kind of understanding of what we should do at a very basic level. So, um, yeah, we can build many different things, but right now we're quite limited. But we can build a shelter. So a shelter is where survivors can sleep, but also it's where we can store things, and they're not going to sort of fall apart because they're out in the sort of, yeah, out exposed to the weather. So if we get a shelter... And we can build things out of different things. So a scrap metal shelter for 30 of our scrap metal. We have 80 right now, but we can get a lot more, I think. So, okay, that's fine. So let's put that there. And that can be where people can live. Although well, only three people, which isn't ideal. And then we'll get another one put next to it where maybe another person can live. I think I might have put that in the wrong place. Um, getting help. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, that's not quite in the right place. Hang on. Can we can we get rid of that? Cancel that. And then, yeah, let's put it in the right place. That would be helpful, wouldn't it? There we go. That looks much better. So now I think what's going to happen is they're going to slowly but surely move some resources over to build our little shelters. Oh, and that's quite handy. On the little kind of character portrait thing, we can see what people are doing. So we know that Annette and Vanessa are kind of standing around doing nothing at all. They've got question marks. Ember, I think, might be about to do something. She's idle right now, but Nova is transporting because there's kind of a little box type icon implying they're carrying things around in a bit of a box. So where is Nova? Nova's over here, look. So Nova, what are you up to? You're going to pick up some of that scrap metal over there and take it over here. If you could all help with that, if you could all join in, although Annette isn't doing that right now and neither is Ember. Okay, maybe they're not big on, maybe they're not big on sort of, you know, transporting things around, but it would be helpful if you could sort of join in. But okay, right. So while they're getting that together, we will do some more stuff. So over, oh, there we go. Ember's actually doing the building. Okay, right. No, that's fine, Ember. That's good. Well done. So I think now we put the stockpile in and we put it over here. So if we go, yep, yeah, okay, small stockpile there. And then we have another one like, oh, hang on, uh, obstructed access to another device. Oh, oh, I see. You have to be able to walk up to the stockpiles. You can't sort of walk over them. Oh, okay, right. I didn't realize that. Um, okay, so we've got a little kind of stockpile there. And then I think, yeah, it did tell us to do this in the tutorial. I mean, eventually you can build shelves and things, but right now it's going to go on the floor because, you know, we've just crash landed. We're just going to do what we can. So go to there, put another stockpile there. Okay, like that. So we can store four sort of piles of things. And then here we might need to get some sleeping spots. So if we just get basic sleeping spots, nothing kind of fancy, just really, really basic things. Um, yeah, if we rotate that round and then we go, yes, please, yes, please, and yes, please. Okay, so we can get three of those in. So we're going to have to take it in shifts, I think, but that's okay. So hopefully, very soon, when that's done, yeah, here we go. People are moving things in, look. People are shifting all the goods in. Uh, now, I did notice there was a weapon. There was a weapon somewhere. So I wonder who should have the only weapon we've got right now. Um, do you know what? Ember, you can have a weapon. So I think this is how we give you a weapon, if I recall correctly. So uh, yeah, here we go. Inventory. Click on that. So we can see what you've got on. You've got on a regular t-shirt, spaceship pants. They sound exciting. Spaceship jacket and sneakers. Okay, regular kind of stuff. But you can have a ranged weapon. We have one laser pistol. High attack rate, but deals light damage. Okay, but that's fine. Range weapon, that's okay. So you go and grab that. I imagine it's over there somewhere. Right, so now we have 
a gun equipped. So we have one person that can at least go and do a little bit of fighting, which is quite useful. Three people, though, are unarmed, which is not ideal. But there we go. Right. OK, so teeny tiny basic shelter setup, not overly advanced. And I think maybe the main problem that we're going to have on this particular kind of world that we've crashed on is that it's quite warm. Right now, it's 32 degrees C. So we're not going to see any kind of cold spell things, I don't think. We're not going to suffer from kind of frost and all that kind of stuff. It's not going to snow, but it's always going to be warm, which means our food is going to go off quite quickly. So I think if we go to here and look at that. Yeah, there we go. So emergency rations. That's what we have. And then it says our shelf life outside 24 days. But it does say under roof indefinite. So now that it's under a roof, yeah, under a roof. Okay, so they will last now forever because they're kind of, you know, they're packaged rations. They're probably not very nice, but um, they will do the job. But yeah, they're not going to last forever because we're, of course, going to eat them. So, but they're not going to deteriorate away in the heat. But other food we make, I think, is going to have a relatively short shelf life. So we might have to bear that in mind. Okay, okay, happy with that. That's looking pretty good. I mean, what else can we do right now? So in terms of orders, that's your kind of classic, you know, go and cut down a group of trees, go and mine that region, go and harvest these things. It's where you sort of zone things out like that. Again, very familiar to the game that this is quite similar to that begins with R and ends in Imworld, that one. Um, and then a camp, you can build various little kind of basic things. Ranching is where we get kind of various things like a drying rack to make leathers and things. Storage, of course, is to do with shelves and things. Um, we might need to get that in quite quickly maybe get a research desk in so we can unlock more of these things because i think yeah we don't really understand how to make you know furniture we can put together all this but a chair is completely beyond us at the moment so we have to research that um and then yeah we need these as well work benches and cooking stoves and all that kind of stuff i mean again look we can make traps and fences and things and um yes again like the game that begins with that and ends in in world we do have the idea eventually when we have a bit of a bigger base of having lovely trap corridors. This game does that as well, which is wonderful. So we will have one of those eventually, but not right now. I think maybe you're transporting some stuff. That's quite good. I think let's possibly go and scavenge that. Scavenge the landing pod, please, because that's going to be useful. Time's nice and quick, which is why Ember is moving relatively quickly. But if we have a look, look, so scavenge progress, naught out of 10. I think we do get quite a lot out of this. I like the fact that scavenging just involves sort of, you know, gently tapping the side of a ship with a little teeny tiny hammer, but that's okay. So get that done nice and quick. Yeah, we need another bed, but we are going to need some more scrap metal, I think. We scavenged 13, ooh, 13 first aid kits. Oh, that's actually really handy. That's very useful. Um, another thing we might want to do, and that again might look familiar, is over here. So activities, here we go. So turn that off. So we can now do the classic thing where we want to make sure that people are doing the jobs they're good at and not doing the jobs they're terrible at. So for example, we know that Vanessa is our main healer. So we want you to have a priority of one on healing and Nova can have two, Ember can have three and Annette cannot do it at all because she's got a healing skill of one and that would be bad. Handling is, what's that? Mundane tasks. Mm, okay, do you know what? You can all have three for that. You can all kind of have three for that. That's okay. Right, construction. I think Ember is the only person who can do any kind of construction at all. But is anybody else kind of interested? Um, no. I think it does say if they're interested. It says, yeah, brackets, indifferent or intri. Yeah, there you go. Look. So they're interested in cooking. You can do the cooking, by the way. Um, nobody interested in construction. So Ember is going to do all of the building work. Okay, not perfect, but there we go. Um, right, you two can go and do the hunting. That's fine. Harvesting can be a net. Um, possibly the only person doing that. And cutting. So cutting down trees is physical. So how about we get... Yeah, get Ember doing... Hang on, no, Ember does, Ember does the constructing stuff. So you can have that as two and that as one. So Nova can do hunting. But then if they're not hunting, they can start cutting down trees and things. Ranching can be a net on two. Planting can be a net on one, because that's important. Scavenging is physical. 
Okay, so put that as two for you two, and then Vanessa maybe as a forelug, just as a thing you might want to go and do. Uh, mining is physical, okay. So put that like that. Right, cooking, yes, absolutely. Annette is good at cooking. Um, the other two, in fact, hang on, yeah, put it on three and Vanessa. In fact, yeah, put, put yours on four because you do lots of other things, Nova. And then Vanessa's can be on three. Uh, crafting, um, Vanessa's indifferent to it. Annette does like it, actually. Hang on. Annette can be chief, hang on, two, put it on two. So chief crafting person. Nova can do a bit of it. And Vanessa can do some if she has to. Tailoring, again, is the same sort of thing. So we'll set that up. Assembling. Produce electronics and advanced weapons on a soldering bench. Okay. That, again, is a crafting thing. Okay, this, this is all fine. This is all very familiar. Hang on, did that wrong. Observing. Right, this is the intellect thing. So, Ember, we want you to go and do intellectual stuff. And then the others can stay on three... In fact, Annette does quite a lot. So Annette can have observing as five because she'll be doing cooking or whatever else, loads of other things before then. So that's okay. And then Vanessa can have that as two because she's okay. Uh, research, again, we want somebody good at that. So Ember, you can have two on research and then you can be again on five and you can be on two, I think. And then deliver, just kind of hauling. Um... I mean, that is quite important. We do want people to do that. Uh, leave that on three as well. So handling and delivering can be on three. There we go. And again, that might look familiar, but okay, that's fine. It's a good way of dealing with things. There's also a schedule as well. So we can sort of force relaxing time and all that kind of stuff. I mean, do you want to do that at the end of the day? Do you just want to give them a nice break maybe before they go to bed? So maybe between five and six, they can just have a little bit of downtime. Just a couple of hours where they can just relax. So they don't completely lose their minds. I think we do that. There we go. I mean, that's coming up soon. They are going to have a little bit of a break soon. But that's okay. That's fine. So, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, you're eating. Where can we put another bed? Uh, because we need some more scrap metal, really. We need some scrap metal. Oh, no. Annette argued with Vanessa about the crash's cause. Okay. So I think... Can we see what they're doing here? Is there a log of their sort of conversations or whatever? Um, I don't know. I don't... Oh, Ember is in mild pain. Uh, smoke inhalation. Oh, okay. Oh, they've all... Ah, they've all got smoke inhalation. Okay, maybe that will go away at some point soon. Um, yeah, can we see... Can we see all that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah, here's their kind of happiness thing. Uh, yeah, so they're not very happy because they crashed out of the skies from in a spaceship. Bit scary. Little pain. But survivor determination. That's good. Catharsis. Okay, so yeah, they've done well and they're you know, believing in themselves a bit more. They survived a crash and they're well fed. Oh, okay, that's good. Well fed is good. That's their profile. Their, fa their favourites. Buttermelon pie. I don't know what that is, but I want one. And um, yeah, restrictions. Yeah, don't eat raw food, everybody. In fact, you know what? We're going to apply that to everybody. Please do not eat raw food because that way bad things lie. And we haven't built a toilet yet. I don't know if they exist in the game, but yeah, that's not going to help your cause if you go around the place eating raw food. Okay, six o'clock in the evening. I think people should now be kind of relaxing and just, you know, chilling out and taking stock of what's going on, trying to calm down. Yeah, people don't like eating on foot. They like eating while they're sat down. So we might possibly have to build some sort of table and chairs, but we haven't got any furniture just yet. We can't do furniture, which is a bit of a shame. I don't know why they don't just sit on the floor and eat, but there we go. Ooh, 41, whatever that was. What was that? That was synthetic textiles that came from that. Oh, that's quite good. Um, I think maybe as well, we should possibly, um, yeah, cut down maybe just those three trees. Yeah, cut, oh, four, four trees. Okay, cut those down, please. So somebody, Ember, go and chop and chop those. And I think it's going to go to night time soon. My only concern is, yeah, how is this other person going to go to sleep? Can we put one of these outside here? I mean, is that going to be... Is that allowed? They're not going to be under a cover, but are they going to be happy about that? Do you know, I think they might possibly have to either like it or lump it. Just kind of, you know, deal with it if it's not ideal. Because we are dealing with a pretty difficult situation right now. So I think, yeah, if we put that there... It isn't going to be under a roof, but it's at least a bed. 
at least they're not going to sleep on the bare floor. It's at least, you know, something vaguely soft-ish to sleep on. So if we put that there, that might be okay. I mean, ideally, we would want to get another little kind of shelter thing there. And the shelters do have roofs, by the way. There's a thing here where you can press that. It is covered. It does have a little roof. But of course, it gets in the way when you try and look at things. So there is a kind of thing up there to take the roofs off just to make life a bit easier. So, okay, if we get that done, if somebody could build that, although, hang on a minute, who does the building? I think Ember does the building. But Ember also does the choppity choppity. Okay, Ember's currently busy chopping down trees. We might not get round to having that thing done. Nova's taking a walk. That's very nice. Some more scavenging going on over here. Um, okay, right. People are keeping busy. People are keeping busy. We're picking up quite a lot of wood stuff, which is good. We need some more scrap metal, please. Right, Nova's going to sleep. Annette is going to sleep. Okay, they're both going to bed. Ember is making the sleeping spot. And Vanessa's getting a bite to eat. Okie dokie. Right, you're back over here now. So Ember and Vanessa going, yeah, we don't need sleep. Away with that. However, we now do have some more scrap metal. Right, okay. But not enough to build... Oh, botherations. Okay, yeah, not enough to build two of these. Because ideally, we'd have another storage one and then another bed one. So that bed can be covered. But we haven't got enough to do that. Okay, I think what we do is... Hang on a minute. Go to the camp, build a shelter, um, get another storage one set up so put that in like that and then get more stock parts of can we have shelves can we have shelves are we allowed to build those oh yeah we can scrap metal and wooden shelves um why don't we get some wooden shelves that's going to be a little bit better isn't it right get some wooden shelves across the back there so yeah confirm that please so that can have proper shelving in and then maybe if we sort of undesignate these if we destroy that thing, they'll eventually move the goods onto the shelves and then we could put some more shelves across there and it's just going to look a little bit tidier. It's going to look a little bit better already. I quite like that. Right, okay, so more stuff there. So I think, yeah, get rid of that. So that's going to go away. That stockpile no longer exists. They can come and kind of you know, unmark that and then they're moving it all onto the shelf. Okay, good stuff. Do the same with that one move all the stuff over onto a lovely shelf that's a lot tidier oh hang on soaked well oh yeah it's raining it is quite rainy out there okay i mean i don't think we can craft umbrellas quite yet but we'll give it a go maybe at some point can we not move all that stuff can we not move all of that scrap metal somewhere else maybe that can't go on there okay well hang on a second so maybe we have ourselves uh, where is it going to be? Storage. So a stockpile there. If we put one little stockpile there where they can store all of that stuff, sort of big things, and then we can have another uh, sort of set of shelves across here. Although the shelves aren't full. Those shelves aren't full. I wonder. I Hang on a second. Hang on. We're going to go and undo some of the stuff that we just did. Hang on a second. We're doing some fine dithering here. So go like that and that. That can be a stockpile. And then we can get rid of that. So come and sort this out, please. All right, rejig that. Put that back over there. Somebody decommission that thing, if you'd be so kind. Anytime you like. Right, wonderful. And then pick that up. Put that under there. That's now under a cover. There we go. Right, splendid. Okay, we have picked up quite a lot of... Is that fuel? I assume that's going to be fuel. Yeah, liquid fuel. Okay, that's come out of this. Uh, six out of ten scavenging sort of runs on that. That's pretty good. Uh, right, what else do we need? I think now we have to get the research desk in. And unfortunately, the research desk is going to go outside. It's going to go outside. I think we make it out of wood because there's loads of wood around at the minute. And we'll pop it right there, in fact, right at the end of the building. That's quite good. So right, lug that in. You can go and build it. And then we need to get researching. Now, how did that work exactly? Hang on. How did the research work? Uh, research, there we go. Yay. Okay. Now, in the tutorial, this was relatively sort of uh, relatively formulaic. It went, hey, click this and do that. And we followed it through. But is it worth having a look through as to what we can actually unlock? Because there is a lot of stuff. There is an awful lot of stuff. I mean, what I'm thinking is really, where can we get some sort of 
refrigeration and cooling because it's really warm. We've landed on a kind of a tropical planet. Things are very warm. We could do with keeping things cold. Power, there, refrigerators. Okay, so to do that, we have to research electrical grids. So we have to start here first. Ah, but then we have requirements. So it says find and produce metal alloys. So I assume, can we not unlock that then? Uh, I think, are these done? I think if they're lit up, it's done. I assume that's sorted, but yeah, we can't build lightning rods, can we? Are these things that we can unlock? Are they things we might be able to unlock? I mean, weaponsmithing, that might be quite a good start. I think that's what the tutorial gets you to do. You know, make a few basic weapons, crossbows and spears and things. Do we go for that, possibly? And then eventually, we're going to need to get metal alloys and then try to get some sort of, you know, basic kind of power grid set up so we can have refrigerators and we can have some sort of air conditioning. Oh, that's how we get the metal alloys. So we build ourselves a kind of a furnace type thing. Okay, so we could get that done, but yeah, I think maybe making our own weapons is going to be quite useful right now because we don't know what's going to creep up on us. I mean, at night time, at some point, something terrible might come out of the woods and go rah and try and kill us a bit. So we might need to fight it off. So I think maybe having everybody armed with at least something, even just a kind of a spear or something really primitive is better than them just kind of, you know, trying to poke a great big monster in the eye with their fingers. So I think maybe weaponsmithing, 12 hours max, but then I think it looks like we can queue things up. So if we say, okay, weaponsmithing, do that. That's going to be quite good. And then get metal refinement. Can we queue that up? Yes, we can. Okay, so we don't need anything for that. That's just a simple piece of research. So that thing, wherever it was down here, that requires other things. So to put a freezer, you have to find or produce electronics. But yeah, that's just a free thing that we can do. What about ore prospecting? That's three days max. Okay, that's quite a lot. Spaceship deconstruction. Oh, okay. So without that, you can't take apart the spaceship bits. We can take apart our little shuttle, but not the giant bits that kind of almost fell on our heads. That's going to be quite handy, though. I see that being very important to giving us loads of resources. So, uh, okay, we'll learn that third. So we'll do that. In fact, you know what? How do we drop that out? Remove from the queue. Do that. So get that done so we can take that apart. Because that might be full of all sorts of useful gadgets and gizmos. And then, I mean, wooden fortifications might be quite good. Get that. Then get metal refinement. And then possibly emergency rations. So emergency rations. So... We can make, I don't know what that is, two bits of food and four, I don't know what that is, emergency rations, two knife and fork and four, it looks like bits of cloth. Four bits of cloth makes two emergency rations. Are we eating cloth? Bit weird, but okay. Um, I think that'll do for now. We'll queue up four things. Okay, so now how does that work then? So Vanessa, because they're quite smart, they're over here, and they're now doing some research stuff. Okay, still dealing with the whole smoke inhalation thing. Hopefully, as time goes by, that'll kind of, that'll stop being an issue. But okay, uh, right, scavenging happening over here. Can we maybe look at grabbing some, in fact, yeah, let's go and investigate things. Um, we've got giant grass, so somebody could go and observe the giant grass. Somebody go and have a nosy at that, please. Is that Ember? Ember's going to go and look at some grass because that's the exciting life that we lead now. Um, and then Annette isn't doing anything at all. Um, I mean, can we can we do farming? I don't think we can do any kind of farming right now. Um, we could maybe, well, that won't be covered, but we could build a table. We could build a table and then build some chairs around it so people can eat sitting down. That does make them a little bit jollier. So let's get that in as well, shall we? So put that in like that. And then, oh, look at that. It automatically gives you the chairs to go with it. But then I didn't, hang on a minute. You can copy things. I didn't hold shift to sort of, uh, to clone it there. But there we go. Um, and it snaps to the table as well. That's quite a nice touch. Okay, so some wood required for that. That's okay. We can get that done. That's not a problem. Right, okay. So you're looking at grass. You're researching. You're going to move stuff around and you are scavenging, and you've picked up a lot more stuff. Right, there's a load of scrap metal. There's a huge amount of scrap metal now. I think we get another scrap metal shelter, rotate it round, fit it there, 
and then put some more shelves in just so we can store even more things in fact it might be worth having that set up over there actually looking at that so have four of those because yeah we can't store much more scrap metal or logs because they're big they can't go on the shelves um yeah okay we'll do that so stockpile like that and a stockpile like that please and that means we can bring all that stuff back okay right run time on nice and quick so how does that work then if we click that we can scavenge that but maybe we don't do it as well as if we've done that research oh hang on said to vanessa that the local animals are no big deal i mean the ones we've seen appear to be no big deal uh, oh there's one there there's one right there hello it's a flathead animal hello flathead animal how are you peaceful okay good this is fine you're just um it looked like you were kind of headbanging but i think you're eating from the grass i think you're eating yeah this is fine we're not bothered by you you're not bothered by us we're gonna get on just fine except to the point where we're going to get a bit hungry and possibly do a spot of eating of you. But, I mean, right now it's okay. Little bit wary. I think it got scared. I think it saw us and got a bit scared because it kind of dashed off. Oh, okay, right, that's fine. And then over here, that's looking good as well. How are we doing observing some giant grass? Is it grass? Is it giant? Good. I'm glad you've done that job there. Well done, you. Okay, maybe we get a workbench set up as well. That could be quite handy just so we can then make weapons and medicines and fabrics and everything else. We can't obviously make any of those right now, I don't think, but we are trying to unlock the secrets of how to make a weapon. So when we do have that unlocked, it would be handy if we could then go make them pretty much straight away. Laughed at Annette for being scared of the dark. That's not very kind. That's not very kind. Can we have some kindness, please? In fact, hang on. Is there anything which can... How do we, how do we make light? Is it camp? A campfire? I don't think we can do it because we haven't got any sticks. Okay, torches. Okay, so torches, we cut sticks from bushes because, yeah, we haven't got any light. So the moment around here, it's quite dark, I imagine. I mean, yeah, it's nighttime. We can see because, of course, if we were pitch black, that'd be a bit rubbish. But I don't know whether they can see very well. Um, are there any bushes? Are there any bushes that we can just go in? Does that count as a bush? I'm not entirely sure. I don't know. Um... I imagine we can get some sticks from that. I mean, is that a different thing? That's blade grass. That's different to the giant grass, apparently. Um, okay. Okay, so at the moment, we haven't got any sticks. So we can't then make any torches or make a campfire or anything like that. Because, yeah, we haven't got anything to burn. Just kind of great big logs. We could, we could build a chopping block. Because that turns wood into sticks. We could do that. Do you know what? Let's get one of those in anyway. Let's get ourselves a nice chopping block set up. And we're still doing the research. You're looking at grass. And you are now doing scavenging. There can't be much left. There can't be much left in there now. So when you're done with that, which is going to be momentarily, that is another load of scrap metal, I think. Which is good. Because that's needed to build many, many things. Uh, right. Okay. Looks like people might all be going to bed. It looks like people might all be going off to bed. Apart from you. You're over here making a noise on the thing, on the spaceship. But they're all trying to sleep. They're far enough away for it not to be a nuisance. Oh, I think we've unlocked the secret of the grass. Okay, so it's called Giant's Grass. Okay, so output when cut, we get a lot of hay. Provides a large harvest and slowly improves the soil around it. Ah, okay, so it's good for the soil. Okie doke. That's quite good. So now, I think we get somebody to go and look at the glowing tree because that's also quite interesting so somebody go and have a nosy at that please and then over here can we... oh ember is chopping ember is doing some chopping okay so i think uh hang on dear yeah, times you are doing that yourself that's so hang on chop cut wood into sticks do that until we have um i don't know do that until we have 20 sticks that's quite a good plan, isn't it? And then take that away. So just keep going until we have 20 sticks. That's going to be quite useful. And then I suspect maybe we're going to have to cut down a couple of extra trees just to uh, make sure we have enough wood to then turn into sticks. But that's fine. Nova can go and do that. Right. Okay. Everyone's busy. I mean, Vanessa's eating. And now Vanessa isn't busy. Vanessa's just kind of standing around. Okay. That's fine. Ah. Farming has appeared. Grass and bush. Okay. We can, we can plant our own giant's grass. 
not overly exciting, but okay. Um, I mean, a campfire would be useful. Because, yeah, that's going to help us cook food and stuff. But we haven't got any sticks just yet. But we will have soon when somebody does some chopping at the chopping block. So I think, yeah, there we go. Campfires and torches have now appeared. So if we just let them do some more stuff, just do some more choppity choppity. Weaponsmithing is researched. Well done, whoever uncovered that. That's hugely important. Okay. Um, right. Oh, I didn't get the I didn't get the, the thingy in the workbench in. What wasn't I saying about the workbench? And then I completely forgot to build one. Okay, never mind. Right, let's get a workbench, Bill. And then maybe we can get ourselves a weapon or two crafted. So I think we put it over there so it's near all the things. Because it's near all of our kind of items over there in storage. And then we just get that done. Anybody going to come and build it? I know Ember does the building. Now, where's Ember? Ah, yeah. Ember was looking at that kind of weird tree. But now Vanessa can go and look at the tree. Just going to pass that knowledge on. You can build that. Oh, hang on. We've almost uncovered the knowledge of the the dandelion tree. Is that what we're going to call it? Oh, that's quite nice. Okay, so output when harvested, dandelion spores. Spores with medicinal and calming properties. Okay, so we can harvest those to maybe get some kind of medicinal components. Okay, though, and we also get some wood as well. Right, okay, that's fine. So right now, we can leave them alone. Um, maybe go and have a look at these then. Go and look at those twisted plants. What can we do with those? Are those any good for us? And then over here, can we make ourselves some weapons, please? Craft some weapons. So, I wonder, we can't do a crossbow. We could do a short bow. So we can make a short bow. Um, and yeah, require some sticks, fabric and leather. Um, allow fabric and leather, allow synthetic textiles. Uh, we've got 86 of those and it requires 10. So yeah, make one short bow. So do that, please. And that means that Nova can have that. And then Annette and Vanessa, I think we'll just give them spears. Just a basic, yeah, basic, easy weapon, pair of spears, one each. Then they can at least defend themselves if they get attacked. What else can we craft? So at the moment, bandages, that might be quite handy. That might be quite useful. I think we do that until we have maybe, what, four lots? One for each person, just to make sure that we can heal people up a bit with some bandages. So that might be quite good as well. And then, yeah, you can order the priority. So you can say, yeah, the bow is more important than the spear, and the spear is more important than the bandages. Ah, here we go. We can now make some torches for the wall because we do have some sticks. I think we couldn't do that before because we were completely stickless. So now we can do that. So go into here, yeah, a wooden torch. So I think just so we can have a little bit of light going on, can we put one over there maybe? Just put one there, just to maybe banish the darkness a little bit away. We don't really have a, um, a campfire either. That's also quite good for that. That's a good source of light. Um, a scrap metal campfire, please. And we'll put that maybe over here. Maybe just there. I mean, yeah, we don't need it for the heat, of course, because it's quite warm around here. But we could use it for the light and also possibly the uh, cooking as well. So pop that down too. Get the basics in. I mean, yeah, it's not luxury living at the minute, but it, it is at least you know, living. These four people survived a terrible, terrible spaceship crash. So at least they are kind of still alive. Hang on, what's that? Oh, that's the same thing. Is that now done? Is that done? Salvage progress naught out of six. Ah, and now we need the spaceship deconstruction thing. Okay, Nova has been blocked. A survivor can't get to where they want to go. Um, I assume just somebody else was in the way. I think that's fine. We'll clear that. Clear all those notifications. That's all good. Uh, what I would like to do is, I would like to, before we wrap things up, I'd like to get the weapons done. I'd like to get the bow done for Nova and the spears done for Annette and Vanessa. That would be quite good, wouldn't it? Some more wood chopping going on. This is great. I like this. This is good. We're doing quite well. Ridiculed Annette's concerns about local predators. Nova, come on, come on. Kindness costs nothing. Just be kind, please. Disturb sleep. I'd like to think that that was whoever it was. Was it Annette, maybe? I'd like to think it was Annette, sort of, you know, making extra loud noises at the workbench or whistling or something just to make sure that Nova couldn't sleep properly. <laughs> just being a bit of a nuisance to disturb their sleep on purpose. Right, short bow is done. We will make sure that you have that short bow because you are quite good at the combat stuff. So, okay, you have a short bow. I don't think we have to craft arrows. 
I don't think the game's quite at that level of detail. I think, yeah, we kind of have a decent supply of arrows to use in the bow. We don't have to craft those. I don't think we do. We'll find out, I suppose. Maybe we do. Hang on. Uh, is it worth checking? Can't craft arrows in there. And they're not in there. I think it's okay. I think it's okay. I think it just kind of gives us arrows because we have ourselves a bow. And I think Annette is now working on our first spear. That's very good as well. Now, while you're doing that, I think it might be worth having a look around to try to find some crops that we could possibly grow because we haven't found anything that we can grow in the ground yet that we can eat. That's grass. That's okay. That's fine. We can use that to get hay. And these things here, we get wood from those and dandelion spores, which we use to then make some sort of medicine type stuff. But we haven't found any kind of actual food stuff yet. Oh, hang on. Skin bark. Can we eat that? I imagine not. It doesn't sound like the nicest of things to eat. Sounds a little bit chewy, if anything. Um, okay, so we get skin bark from that. A raw cork-like material can be processed into veggie leather on a workbench. Okay, so if we get some of that, we can then get some sort of leather. Okay, but that's again not food. We can't eat that. Um, okay. What are the things can we find around the place that we might be able to eat? What's that in those trees? Hang on. Hang on. A peculiar palm. They look like bananas, but obviously not like normal bananas that we have on Earth because they are red. Well, that would be very exciting if we could have red bananas. That'd be amazing. Um, is it worth sending somebody over to look at the, look at the red bananas? There's none over here, I don't think. These are all just regular trees. That's a bit of a shame, isn't it? It would have been handy had they been just there. What's that? A small flying lizard. Hello, small flying lizard. Um, okay, there's a giant tree just there. Huge tropical tree. I like that we have to kind of go and observe everything because we've crashed here on a planet that we've got no idea about. We kind of have to try and figure everything out. So we mean the trees, they look like a regular tree to us, but they might have sort of special little kind of hidden properties or whatever. That's quite good. I like that. I was kind of secretly hoping they might have coconuts in it, something or some you know, sort of alien equivalent. But no, they do not. OK, who would like to go over here and observe a red banana tree? And that might be a thing that we can grow to get some food out of. Oh, big leafed plant. OK, that could also be useful. That could be handy. And there's some more of those things. Oh, hang on, hang on. What's that there? Pause time for a second. Pause time. A cause for celebration, but that looks squash. Squash-like plant. Okay, these are some sort of, yeah, pumpkin-type looking things. Okay, we need to go and look at those as well. Because I think if we learn about those, we could then put them on a little farm of our own and then have a decent, stable supply of food coming in. And we can make, you know, veggie soup or whatever. That'll be quite good. Um, okay, hang on a minute, hang on. A cause for celebration. Uh, we put together a camp as quick as we could, considering the circumstances. We are not sleeping in the dirt. We have a roof over our heads and a fire to illuminate the dark uncertain nights. And the most important, we have survived. I was just saying that. I was just saying the very same thing. I mean, yeah, it's not exactly you know, luxurious living, but you're not a bit dead. To us, this feels like an achievement worth honouring. We can gather around the campfire and celebrate being alive at seven o'clock tonight. Yes, a great idea. Let's do it. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, somebody go and observe the squash plant thing. That's going to be fun as well. But yeah, okay, we're going to have a big old party. That's very good. I like that. Um, okay, so Annette, how are you doing? How are you doing with this? Have we made any of these? No, you're still making one spear. Okay, right, so progress is slow over here, but of course, the more Annette does this, the better they get at crafting and all that kind of stuff. I mean, there's a ton of stats about all the people. There's a lot of information about them. They've got all these kind of metrics here. They've got heat uh, sort of tolerances and cold tolerances and things. Tells you what they're better at. Oh dear, Annette not doing a grand job at being sort of friends with people. That was what you were supposed to do, Annette. That was what we wanted you for. Um, you can see where they're injured and what the sort of is going on with them and how sort of they're moving around and all that kind of stuff. It's quite warm out there at the minute. 37 degrees is their temperature. That's okay. Um, and then, yeah, that's their kind of mental health kind of stuff going on. That's their items. That's their stats. That's their kind of traits and a description about them. They like Ratatouille. Ratatouille is their favourite thing. Okay, do you mean the food or the film? I'm not quite sure. Um, and they appreciate decorations. 
Okay, so if we unlock some lovely decor, we could make Annette a little bit happier. And then we get a whole sort of little block of text about them. And then, um, yeah, you can sort of do their restrictions and control what they do in certain situations. But that's fine. Right, we do have a spear. So, um, I mean, yeah, you've both got, I think, uh, combat of zero, haven't you? But you're indifferent about combat. So, Vanessa, you can have yourself a lovely spear. You treat yourself there to a big uh, big stick with a point bit on the end. That's going to be good. And Ember is observing the squash-like plant. Okay, what we're going to do is, I was going to wrap up when we got a spear or two done, but I think we get through to 7 o'clock tonight, and then we watch the party, and then we wrap things up. Because I think that seems like a good sort of point to finish things. But I would like to get to the party bit first. Oh, by the way, the um, the blue thing behind their portrait is their happiness. So I think at the moment, most people seem pretty happy. Ember, not the happiest. 48, 49%. Oh, it's creeping up. It's creeping up. Um, yeah, what's Ember doing that's making her so jolly all of a sudden? Where is Ember? Uh, oh, yeah, she's over there. Over there looking at the plant. Oh, okay. She really, really enjoys looking at that plant. It's raining. Right. Sausage palm. A new discovery. It's a fruit-bearing palm. The fruits are very peculiar. They have a muscle-like tissue and taste so convincing like meat that vegetarians wouldn't eat them. Okay. So it, these are like m not meat bananas. Okay. Uh, the palm itself grows slowly, but it still may be worth it to plant some for a more reliable supply of meat. Oh, no, it is meat. Uh, muscle like tissue and taste so convincing like meat that vegetarian. Uh, so it's not meat, but the game considers it meat. Okay, so we've unlocked the harvesting of the palm meat, planting of sausage palms, and palm oil technology for research. Okay, <laughs> that's brilliant. And then we're going to get that done as well. We're going to get that done. Oh no, Ember didn't quite finish the thing. She didn't quite finish. 97%. You could have just finished that off. Oh my goodness me. Okay, never mind. We'll come back and sort that out, probably. Right, okay. I think it might be party time soon. Are we all going to have a lovely party at 7 o'clock? It's not long. It's the next hour. Come on, everybody. Get all your dancing shoes on. We're going to have a wild time. It's going to be brilliant. You could have some uh, some lovely sort of emergency rations. And we can all stand in the rain. Won't that be crazy? Look, you're gathering for a celebration. And that's taking a walk. Uh, Vanessa's cleared off to look at the squash-like plant, and I don't know where the other person is. <laughs> I know Ember's asleep. Oh, no, Ver. Oh, no, hang on. Annette's coming for the celebration. That's fine. Uh, celebrating survival. Yay! Okay. <laughs> They're having a sit. You've got perfectly good table and chairs there. Sit on the table and chairs, you two. I've built these. We built these for you, look. Lovely, lovely, comfortable things. Got encouraged by Nova's words. Vanessa is still observing the squash-like plant, and it's done. Buttermelon. Oh, we're supposed to click these, are we? And it tells us things. This local vine plant gives large edible fruits which have a tough peel. It reminds me of pumpkins and melons, so I'll call it buttermelon. Okay, where did the butter come from? Not like pumpk melon or something. Melonkin. Uh, right, buttermelons can be harvested and cooked. They might have some of the good uses too. Okay, we can harvest it and we can plant it now, which is wonderful. Um, right, okay. Ember's now joined in and is celebrating. Everybody's a bit soaking wet. Four days of food supply. Vanessa's going to come over and join in the party, which is wonderful. People are all celebrating. There we go. Vanessa's joining in. Oh, Vanessa joined in by going to sleep. <laughs> Hooray! Okay. Um, did we finish crafting the spear? Uh, oh, I think we did. I think we did. Uh, Annette, you can have a spear. Don't go and get one now. It's up. Oh, no, you are going to go and get it now. Okay, sorry about that. Get your spoon and go back to bed. Sorry, Annette. Okay, so with our little celebration of survival now done, and of course everybody partied so hard at that celebration, they're now all in bed. They're all completely exhausted. But with that done, I think we'll wrap things up for now with Stranded Alien Dawn. But of course we're coming back to this. This is a new series for the channel because we're nowhere near completed with this. We're nowhere near done. We've only just really started. We've only just scratched the surface, I would say. We have the very basics in. We have some roofs over our heads, which is good. We've got some places to store stuff. We've got some places to make stuff. We've got some places to cook stuff. And we have some places to go to bed. And that's kind of it. We have plenty to do. I mean, in the long run, really, we want to get a lovely base over here with little kind of individual rooms and corridors and work areas and indoor storage and outdoor storage and kind of a whole sort of electronic setup with solar panels and wind turbines and batteries and refrigerators and defences, automatic things going on. We've got loads and loads of work to do. 
But I think, yeah, this is a pretty good start. I'm quite happy with how it's going. I mean, yeah, we do need to start thinking about getting some food in, of course. There was a nagging message there that said, oh, yeah, food's not looking good. So we are going to have to work on that maybe next time because that's always what we have to do in these games. Always happens in a settlement survival game. It's always food, isn't it? Everything else seems to go over quite well. And then all of a sudden it goes, yep, yeah, do you know what? Your people are starving and they're quite grumpy about that. So we'll try and work that out. I think... We'll plant some of those of our own, but we will go and harvest these as well. So we'll grab some of those and we'll grab some meat bananas as well, which is a little bit weird. So we'll grab those and maybe with those we could cook some stuff. I'm not entirely sure. I don't know what we can cook with meat bananas and um, you know, weird space pumpkins because I've not got that recipe book yet. So I'm not quite sure what we can cook with those, but we'll grab some and we'll see what we can do to hopefully alleviate the food problem. And then we'll just carry on. We'll just carry on what we're doing. We'll do some more research, try to build better things, maybe build some proper rooms and such like, rather than living in these kind of little shed type things. And we'll just go from here. But I think it's a pretty good start. We'll see how we get on next time when we come back. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in Stranded Alien Dawn. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Kunik, your time is now. And you have missed, Kunik. <laughs> this is this is unacceptable, Kunik. And Ash's caravan has been ambushed by man-hunting chinchillas. <laughs> Are you going to land on my potatoes? <laughs> that is just not the done thing. Oh, there's a lot of them. One, two, three. These guys have got amazing hair. I'm delighted that we've actually done something and it's worked.